Hi and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's educational videos. Today we're going to be talking about photograms. If you're an exploring photography student, you're going to want to take some notes. I'll try to point out the main points that I want you to get, but definitely you're going to want to get all of the dates and names that we cover. If you ever need to, just hit pause to take some notes and continue the video at your own pace. So first of all, what is a photogram? You're definitely going to want to write down this definition. We did some uh, research and discussion in class, but here's our definition that we want to use moving forward. An image made without a camera by placing objects directly onto photo paper and then exposing it to light. The areas exposed to light will turn black. Areas that are blocked by the objects will remain white. Here's an image, a picture of a photogram about to be made. I want you to just picture in your mind this image, what it's going to look like when the photogram is done, using what we know about photograms. We start with this. The end result is flatter. The three-dimensionality of the pine cone is lost, and it's something I want you to consider when you're making your photograms. Three-dimensional objects may not look the way that you imagine. It's going to look like a shadow or a reflection of that object rather than have the height of the object. Uh, for more, there is a website right there. So let's just talk a little bit about the history of photograms. Let's start in 1725. Johann Heinrich Schultz, he's a chemist, he's a scientist, he leaves some chemistry by the window and what happens is it changes. He notices this change and uh, decides to cut out letters out of uh, paper and wraps them around the jars. And essentially, he makes the first photogram. It's a little bit of an experiment. Uh, he's not a photographer. Photography didn't exist yet. Um, and what he notices is that the letter cutouts block the light from hitting the chemistry. and um, when he takes those cutouts off, uh, an image remains. Uh, no images survive this period, though, because uh, as soon as he took the chemistry down from the shelf uh, and mixed up the chemistry, the image went away. In the 1790s now, uh, several years later, there was an artist named Thomas Wedgwood who makes a bunch of photographs. At this point, uh, he's one of uh, several people experimenting with photography and makes a bunch of photograms. Unfortunately, no images survive uh, from Thomas Wedgwood. Here's my picture of the 18th century photograms. We don't have anything from this period. So my question to you is, and let's write this question down, please. Why are there no surviving photographic images from the 18th century or the 1700s? And what I'd like you to do is write down your answer and come prepared to share it in class. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about the history of photograms. In the 18-teens to 1820s, um, there are several people here, all with long names, for which I apologize, but here we go. William Henry Fox Talbot, Joseph Nisifor Niepce, Hippolyte Baird, Sir John Frederick, Frederick William Herschel, and Louis Daguerre experiment um, with different chemical processes. Basically, they're all on the same track. They're trying to invent photography and essentially invent a way to make an image that doesn't fade away. Remember that Wedgwood was making images in the late 1700s that faded away. Um, so these guys are all trying to figure out how to do it so that it doesn't fade away. Well, in 1826 or 1827, depending on who you talk to, Joseph Nisifor Niepce creates the first photo. And here it is. Um, let's click on this right here and take a look and see where that brings us. If we uh, go here to this website, you can go ahead and just copy that down. I'll try and provide a link in the description of the video. There is uh, some information about this first photograph, so you can do a little bit of research on your own. We're not too concerned with that. We're more concerned with photograms. Well, in the 1830s, um, shortly after Niepce creates his first photo, um, 
photographers, many photographers are making photograms. There are lots of images that were made in the 1830s that are still with us today. For example, this image right here of some leaves uh, by Henry Fox Talbot. But wait, all of this was true up until 2008. This image right here, this beautifully detailed image right here, was put up for auction in 2008. Um, but shortly after it was posted, um, historians got together and said, you know, I don't think this is what you think it is. Um, it was pulled from auction to do some more research, but basically, they thought it was Fox Talbot from the 1830s, and the historian said, you know, I don't think that's right. Um, they thought it might have been from the late 1700s or early 1800s. There is a W on the back of the plate, though. Um, so they're sort of leaning towards maybe somebody who's like got a W name. And what I want you to do is write down um, who do you think could have made this photogram? And the other question, which I think you'll be able to answer based on our experiences in the darkroom, is how could this image have survived from the 1700s? If all of the images that Wedgwood was making, and he was writing about these when he was making them, he said many times over that uh, he had some trouble, you know, he, he couldn't get the images to, to, to not fade away. How could this image have then survived from that period? Um, something to think about, write down your answer and we'll discuss it next class. Well, let's talk about some photogram artists. Let's start with Fox Talbot. He's one of the first. Fox Talbot is known for creating a paper, a photo paper process where everybody really before him was using plates, metal plates. And he comes into this and this quote kind of gives us a little bit of a uh, an inkling into his thought process, his uh, uh, how he got into photography. And he was drawing, he was drawing, um, and he basically found that his, uh, I'll read the quote, for when the eye was removed from the prism in which all looked beautiful, I found that the faithless pencil had only left traces on the paper, melancholy to behold. So he's not too happy with his drawing. He wants to find a way to create an image that's more faithful, in his words, uh, to what he sees with his own eyes. So he creates the photo paper that we sort of use today, it's more or less. There's quite a few uh, things that have happened since then. But All right, let's talk about Anna Atkins. She's um, known as the first woman photographer. She definitely uh, produced the first photo book, and that was in 1843. And it was a book of these um, photograms of, uh, of uh, algae. Um, they're pretty cool. All right, they're cyanotypes, which means they are blueprints. Blueprints, those are cyanotypes. If you're interested in making cyanotypes, we actually make them in the full year advanced class. Let's jump ahead about 100 years now to a man named Man Ray. He's an American photographer living in Paris and working with abstraction and experimental design. And that's what we see here. These he called rayographs, and that was his version of the photogram. Sometimes they would represent things, but more often than not, he was interested in how he could arrange objects into an interesting experimental design. And that's something I want you to think about when you're making your photograms. Another photographer working at the same time as Man Ray, and really along the same lines, is this guy, Laszlo Mahali Nagy. And um, they were both interested really in the expressive qualities of light. How could they use light to express themselves? Somebody else who's interested in that concept is a person living today, James Welling, and he was working with abstraction and very large. These photograms are uh, almost three feet tall. And you see here, these are not supposed to represent anything, but they are very deliberate compositions. Very much like another contemporary or modern photographer, Marcus Am. He's working today, here these are from the late 90s, and he's working with shape, line, space, positive and negative space, blacks and whites and grays and shapes. So something to think about when you're making your photograms. Somebody working today, Adam Fuss or Foose, 
Uh, I couldn't get a consensus on that. I think it's Foose, but it might be Fuss. Anyway, he's working with photograms. Um, this is a great quote. I feel a photogram which has much less information has much more intimacy and feeling than a normal photograph. And let's go ahead and click that link. And it's going to bring us to this Vimeo video. If you want, I'll try again to remember to put this link in the description of the video below. Um, but if you can, uh, if you just want to write it down, 13149236. So vimeo.com slash 13149236. And that's just a 3 minute and 43 second video. It's a short little window into Adam Foose's process, which is very, very interesting. He's using live snakes. Um, he's, he's shooting babies and rabbits and these dresses that you see in front of you and butterflies. Very, very interesting. He's representing, uh, he, he's interested in uh, metaphor and all sorts of really cool things. In fact, let's talk a little bit more about uh, his, his ideas of metaphor. So these are a series of photograms he, he did of uh, butterflies. And uh, this image is actually from William Henry Fox Talbot to bring it full circle of moth wings in 1840. And these are butterfly photograms made in 2012, just a few years ago. So here's the question I want you to write down and answer in writing, bring it for next class. And if Foos is using metaphor in his work, it, you know, he says he thinks that uh, photograms are more expressive because they have less information. What do you think butterflies represent? How do, how do Foos's image relate to Fox Talbot? So what's the relationship between these two images here? Okay. Conceptually, uh, expressively, ideally, I want you to maybe look up any words you don't understand here to try and come up with an answer to this question. Uh, how, how is this image metaphorical? Okay, look up metaphor if you don't know what it means. And uh, let's finish this up by talking about another technical approach here. We started with the definition. We looked at some photographers. Let's finish it up with the technical. So how do you achieve different values in your photogram? Here's a, a photogram by Man Ray. Well, one is to use translucent objects. Translucent objects allow light, but not detailed images to pass through. Transparent would be totally clear. Translucent would be like a piece of paper or a frosted window. Time, you can change the value of a photogram by placing opaque objects on photo paper for different amounts of time. Finally, with three-dimensional objects, sometimes the light can bounce and reflect under areas of the object that aren't in direct contact with the photo paper. Make sure you copy all of this down, and as well as write down your answers to the few questions that I posed. You should have all of the names and dates. If you need to go back and rewatch anything, please do. Come prepared with a full page or more of some notes to discuss next class. Additionally, if we're working on photograms uh, next class, you're going to want to bring objects. So hopefully the historical view into what artists are doing with photograms will inspire you and you can come prepared with some different objects to make your own photogram.